Today we're talking about a fish that I've kept for a few months now. I've actually raised them from eggs and they really, really recently started to catch my eye as they've colored up in the last few weeks. And they are officially my Valentine's fish of 2019. And that is the dwarf neon rainbow fish or Praycox rainbow fish. As you can see here, I picked them up some Valentine's Day goodies. We're gonna get to those in a little bit. Spoiler alert, it's food. But first I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about this cool rainbow fish. Um, I don't claim to be an expert on all rainbow fish. This is one that I've kept for a while. I've raised them from an egg and I really wanna share with you guys my experience with them because they're something that you know I've grown to really love. They're a really colorful kind of iridescent fish that doesn't get too big. Uh, they're very active, but they stay around about you know two, two and a half inches. Um, they're, you could easily tell the males from the females as the males kind of have some red in their fin, whereas the females um, have more yellow. Um, ideally, you want to keep a fairly long aquarium. Um, I have mine at a 20 gallon long. Uh, they're still juvenile. Some of them are fairly small still. Um, but ideally, I think a 40 breeder is a perfect aquarium for them. 55 gallon is good as well. They're a pretty peaceful fish. So you can keep them with most community fish. You know, they're pretty hardy and they like a temperature range of 72 to 79. Um, if you want to keep some fish that don't like, you know, boisterous fish, probably don't go with these. So I'd say these are active. Um, they're peaceful, peaceful, but they are active fish. Um, they're native to uh, rivers in Indonesia. They're more of a shoaling fish than a schooling fish. Um, I don't claim to be an expert on the differences. I think the biggest point is you want to keep at least a few of them. I recommend at least six or more. Um, I got a school of about, you know, 10 to 12 and they really do kind of stick together. Um, sometimes you see them, you know, uh, solo, but for the most part, they are kind of, you know, sticking together. They're pretty easy to breed. Like I said, I raised mine from eggs. That's because my good buddy here on YouTube, Tom at Team Aquatics, I'll link his channel in the description below. Um, he actually has a bunch that bred and he sent me some eggs in the mail. I was able to hatch them out. I'm not gonna go into details on how to breed them and how to hatch out the eggs. Um, I'll link to other videos. And in the future, I wanna do more detailed process on breeding them. Um, but I do wanna talk about feeding them and kind of preparing them to breed and preparing them um, or raising them you know, fast and making sure they're healthy. Let me know in the comments down below, what's your Valentine's Day fish this year. I feel like all of us as fish keepers have a favorite fish this week, that week, whatever. There's no criteria. This is a fish that I've been really feeling lately. So I made it my Valentine's Day fish 2019. What's yours? One of the reasons why I picked up these Valentine's Day gifts for the fish is because I noticed you know, I wasn't getting as much growth as I wanted to, so I wanted to pick up some better foods for them. I had been feeding them um, some golden pearls when they were first hatched, which is a great food, and, um, and then I've been feeding them some crushed flake food, which they've been eating just fine, um, but I kind of skipped a step, which obviously wasn't necessary, but I think it would have helped me out a lot. I'm using it a little bit now, and I want to definitely use it in the future, and that is baby brine shrimp. As you can see, I've already been using it. Baby brine shrimp, I've found a decent way. I actually, big shout out to Tom at Team Aquatics again. I, I watched his video as well as a bunch of other videos on how to make brine shrimp. There are hundreds if not thousands of different ways. Um, I found a kind of simple way and altered it for my, um, for my use that worked for me. So I'll put out a video on that and hopefully it, um, you know, it, it, it helps you guys out too if you want to get some brine shrimp because this is, in my opinion, the best food for baby fish. Um, these dwarf neon rainbows don't need it their whole life, obviously, but you know, as far as raising the babies and getting good growth on them, I think this is key. Um, since I've been feeding it, I feel like it's been like steroids for them, and I wish I would have um, gave it a try a little bit sooner. The other food in here is something that I've been wanting to try out for a while. I just picked it up. Both of these foods are not sponsored, by the way. I'm gonna stick links, uh, affiliate links, from, if to both of them down below, they have out the channel. Um, this is a San Francisco Bay brine shrimp eggs um, that I bought. And then I also picked up this as well. Like I said, none of this is sponsored. I pay for these my own money. And this is aquarium co-op fry food. Now this stuff is cool for a lot of reasons. I plan on feeding this stuff to the neon rainbows probably for their whole lives because it's, I think it's just a versatile food. Um, but I'm also been feeding this to um, my other tanks and small fish. But let me get into feeding it to them and we'll talk some more about it because um, I'm really excited about these foods and these gifts, but the fish are even more excited. Now I've only been recently feeding baby brine shrimp, but I feel like it's like a wonder magic food. Uh, it's not as hard as you may think. It's definitely live food, so it definitely takes some work. I'm gonna be putting out a video here um, soon, the next week or two about it, because I got a pretty easy DIY way, cheap and easy way I've done it. But um, the brine shrimp I found is like probably the best food there is. It, it's it's super tiny, so it's really good for small fry. 
but it's jam-packed full of nutrients. Now, since I've been feeding brine shrimp, I really believe that it's like the best thing to feed. Now, it's not as easy as, you know, some of the other foods that we're gonna get into, but I recommend that if you're really trying to breed fish, brine shrimp is the best thing for them. You know, growing up these juvenile fish, breeding shrimp, or uh, breeding fish, um, this brine shrimp is like the best thing. Fish will love it. It's really easy for me to explain to you guys why I love this food and it's right on the bottle. It's super easy to feed and it floats, then it sinks, and then it's got, you know, really good ingredients. So essentially, when I put this on here, you just squirt it out. If you look at it here, hit the button, or hit the button, hit the, hit the bottle, and it squirts out. And if you look, it kind of stays on top of the water. Um, we just kind of got a, a sponge filter going on here, spreads out, and then you'll see it start to sink as well. So what's really good about this food is it's perfect for any you know fry growing up. It's a little bigger than let's say your golden pearls, but it's big enough that even adult fish, adult guppies can eat it. I feed it to uh, this tank with my cardinal tetras and harlequin rasboras. It's the easiest thing for me to feed. Um, I switch it up and I'll do some flakes sometimes, but it's super easy to feed. Like I said, it coats the, the, uh, the top of the water. The fish all go right for it. And as it sinks, not only will some of these fish go for it, uh, there's a few panda quarries in this tank and you know, they'll kind of go for it at the bottom. Snails will pick it up. Um, so, you know, you can overfeed obviously with any food, but keep in mind that this food, although it's not necessarily designed for bottom feeding fish, if you have a tank where you have some bottom feeding scavengers, they will be able to pick this food up. Something you really don't hear people talk about is the rate at which a food sinks. And I don't, I don't wanna get into it technically or whatever, but if you look at this food, it doesn't like sink to the bottom. Like a lot of times sinking pellets will sink to the bottom or it'll float for a while. Then when it sinks, it sinks. With this stuff, as you can see, it kind of gets suspended. It sinks slowly. So a lot of the fish are eating it off the top of the water, but a lot of them are able to kind of catch it in the, you know, the middle of the water column as well as it's in the middle of sinking. So it's really just kind of a, a really good beneficial food. Um, the, the bits are probably a little too small for the bristlenose pleco to pick up, although I'm sure he could suck a few in. You could see he's, he tells he's tell something. He could tell something's in the water. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know that I always try to do things cheap. So I, it's rare that I do buy things brand new. Um, if I can, I try to buy things used. There's no real cheaper or quick alternative way for me to get these products. And I think that they are worth it. Um, that's why you know I recommend them to you. I would spend my you know money buying these new again and again if I have to. Obviously, if I found this stuff used or free, I'd pick it up. But it just doesn't happen because this is the kind of stuff that no one gets rid of like that. This the kind of stuff that people use up and people are using um, there's a reason why that you just have to sometimes buy things new hope you guys learned something today if you already knew about this rainbow fish let me know in the comments down below what's your other favorite rainbow fish what rainbow fish do you keep i appreciate you guys watching as always stay positive and stay passionate